The U.S. dollar continuing its downward spiral today. Part of the story, Australia Central Bank taking the world by surprise, becoming the first major industrialized nation to raise interest rates. Well, what does it mean for the greenback? Let's bring in Kathy Lean, Director of Currency Research for GFT and Online Brokerage. Kathy, good to see you again. It's my pleasure. We just said, Lori just said, taken by surprise. Did Australia's uh, action take you by surprise? I think their boldness really took everyone by surprise, including myself. Everyone expected the RBA to be hawkish and sort of pave the way for a rate hike. But no one really, well, not many people expected them to just jump the gun and hike interest rates now. Why, but I think, why did they? I think it's more of a strategic decision on their part because their next interest rate decision in November comes after the Q3 inflation report. And it's a very good chance that Q3 inflation report is going to show that inflation is very, very low. So at that point, they'll need to justify why are they hiking interest rates when inflation is at such low levels? So by doing that now, it's sort of a strategic decision in the sense that they don't need to address that issue. And they were going to probably raise interest rates anyway towards the end of the year. So it's more of um, a matter of uh, strategic planning than anything else. Was there any thinking on Australia's part that, hey, this could hammer the dollar, which is already weaker? So now that Australia's hiked rates, are we seeing a new trading low range for the dollar? Well, they actually talked about the Australian dollar specifically in their statement and said, you know, yes, we acknowledge the fact that the Australian dollar has risen significantly and it's probably going to curtail growth a bit. But they're not really worried at this point. I think they do recognize the fact that by hiking interest rates, it could practically um, drive the Australian dollars maybe 90 cents, maybe even parity against the U.S. dollar because the Federal Reserve is in a very, very different place. But I think they're looking at China and they're looking at the rise in commodities prices and they're just not worried about it right now and it's what's really important is that this won't be the first rate hike from the RBA they could follow up with another one before the end of the year so it begs the question who's next and what does it mean for the interest rate differential how are foreign exchange investors right. gonna make money from here going out I think how you play currencies going forward is where each of the major central banks fit in for example we know that the Reserve Bank of Australia is very hawkish and next in line is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand because based upon the um, options on on interest rate futures, we see that the market is beginning to price in a possible move by the RBNZ as well. You know, way in the other side of the spectrum is really central banks like the UK, central banks like the Federal Reserve included, because Fed officials have been pretty adamant about uh, about not exiting right now and basically trying to keep their quantitative easing intact for as long as possible. So I think that does mean that the dollar um, could continue to fall. We've got two more interest rate decisions this week. We've got the Bank of England and the European Central Bank. Bank. So right. rate monetary policy announcements, where those central banks stand, is really going to determine where those currencies are headed. Kathy, would this action by Australia have been taken if we weren't in a dollar weak environment, do you think? Well, I think that if the dollar was strong, that they would probably be even more encouraged to take this move. Because when you have, right now, the big problem they have is by increasing the in, uh, interest rates, they basically are propelling the currency higher. So that's actually kind of contractionary. If the currency was weaker and the U.S. dollar was stronger, they actually may have been more compelled and more felt more urgency to hike interest rates, maybe even been more hawkish in their statements. So I think that, you know, they're probably even more hawkish if it wasn't for the weak dollar. You seem to suggest the Fed could be among the last of the global central banks to hike rates, so that's got to be a huge dollar negative. I mean, how much right. lower, how much weaker can the U.S. dollar go from here? Right, I mean, exactly. The Federal Reserve in the past, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, I think, has not ever um, raised interest rates before the unemployment rate has peaked. So that's why, you know, unemployment is expected to see 10 percent. So we're pretty far away from, you know, that level. And I think that that's why, you know, the people expect the Federal Reserve to lag. But because of that, you know, against the Aussie, I do expect us to hit 90 cents, maybe even higher. I think that Australia's rate decision really shuffles in uh, focus on who's going to hike interest rates, who's going to be more reluctant. So that's why I think the euro dollar is going to benefit um, against the U.S. dollar as well. When's because, it going to hit 150? Well, I mean, I think it's. I'm going to Europe soon, so I'm really hoping you know, not in the couple, next couple of weeks. But I think that we're headed in that direction. Kathy, may I ask you quickly before, before we leave you? Um, if, if I'm here in the U.S. and I'm hearing the three of us talk about this action by the Australia Central Bank, what do you tell people? People are asking, well, how does this affect me? Why should I care? 
Well, this matters for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, if you're traveling, you know, weak dollar obviously hurts things. Right. But more importantly, we're walking into earnings season. I think it's really, really important that the people recognize the fact that weak dollar is beneficial for earnings. So what this sure. means is that we could see this equity market rally continue if we have some good earnings reports. And, um, and that shuffle in basically over the next couple of weeks. So possibly more strength in equities, which means more strength in high yielders. And also driving up the price of gold. We're seeing gold at a new high right. today. So does that uh, raise the issue of inflation, especially with dollar? Oh, 20 seconds they're telling me. So uh, is there an inflation issue here with the dollar? Oh, they're telling me we can talk more after the commercial break. So okay, quick comments fantastic. on gold and inflation. Fantastic.